Hi, I am Dr. Amarachi Ijama. I am a fertility physician and this channel focuses on everything in fertility and women's health. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you, not only telling you, but showing you what happens during egg retrieval. If this is something you'll be interested in, then keep watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Egg retrieval is a part of the IVF treatment where we take eggs from the woman. For those of you that are not familiar with IVF, IVF is the process of assisting couples who are finding it difficult to conceive naturally, or couples that want to choose the sex of their baby, or couples that want to check the genes of their baby. For example, sickle cell disease, let's say the couple are both the couple of both AS and they want to choose the sex of their baby, you can actually opt for IVF to do that. The process of IVF includes your first visit to the clinic and in this first visit, your doctor takes a thorough history, your medical and fertility history, and then tells you everything you need to know about IVF, counsels you, gives you another appointment for your investigations, that's all your tests, and then gives you another appointment to review those investigations. So the first few visits are about three to five visits. During these visits, you and your doctor has established a relationship and a rapport. And then with your history and the results of your investigation, your doctor determines what treatment is best for you. So most times fertility treatment is individualized and then you work together to pick a convenient time that you will do your IVF. The treatment is in stages. The first stage is that you'll be given medications to stimulate your ovaries. That's to tell your ovaries to produce a lot of follicles. Follicles are just sacs of fluid, sacs that contain water. Then the egg is suspended in the sac. So the follicle is what you see on the scan. So the first stage, you'll be given medications to stimulate your ovaries, to tell your ovaries to produce multiple follicles. And this stage usually lasts for about 10 to 14 days. Then you'll be given another injectable medication and then told to come within 34 to 36 hours from the time you are given that medication. What that medication does is that it triggers your already mature follicles to be ready for retrieval. Then we'll give you an appointment to come for your egg retrieval. These are the things you need to know for your egg retrieval appointment. On the day of your appointment, you're expected to come before the 36 hour mark so that you can be prepared for the egg retrieval and to also prevent rupture before we can actually go in to collect the eggs. In other words, to prevent us losing those eggs. When coming, don't put on makeup, nail polish, perfumes. Don't eat midnight before you come because of the general anesthesia. Don't wear contact lenses as well. It is important to come before the 36 hour mark because it is a time sensitive procedure. We don't want to lose the eggs. Not all follicles contain eggs, so as much as possible, we want to maximize our chances of getting as much eggs as possible. So when you come in early, you'll be ushered into the ward. The nurse or the doctor will now counsel you on the procedure. Before now, of course, you would have already been counseled, but this is just like procedure. When you're on the ward, the nurse or the doctor will reassure you tell you about the procedure again, then tell you how that it won't be painful because of the anesthesia. Then an IV cannula will be sighted in your vein so that we can pass IV fluid, anesthesia, antibiotics. You will be told to empty your bladder, that is to pee before you enter the theater. Apart from preparing you for the procedure, coming early helps to calm you down. It gives you time to pray before the procedure if you want to, or talk to the phone, to whoever you talk to that helps to calm your nerves or to do whatever ritual you want to do before your procedure. It affords you that time. You don't need to shave before your procedure because whether you shave or not, we are not making an incision on your vulva. So it's not necessary, it's not significant before the procedure. In the theater, you'll be told to lie on your back on the operating table with your legs hanging on the leg support. Then when the anesthesia, that's the drugs to numb the pain, when it kicks in, your blood pressure, your temperature, your pulse, your vitals will be checked and then procedure starts. Then your vulva will be cleaned. Then a speculum will be passed inside your vagina. A speculum is an equipment used, is an instrument used to view the inside, the inner part of your vagina and to view your cervix properly. So when we open up, 
we clean inside again and then we put our probe the probe is what helps us view what's going on on your reproductive organs in your pelvis so we we'll put it in that's it's connected to the scan the ultrasound scan so we can view but this probe right now is going in with an aspiration needle now this aspiration needle is what we use to get to the follicle so we can suck out the fluid and the egg so it's called aspiration so we're aspirating the fluid we aspirate the follicles till they all collapse that's till they are all empty meanwhile in the lab the embryologist is separating the eggs from the follicles at the end of the procedure he then takes the sperm and uses it to fertilize the egg the egg retrieval process takes about 20 to 45 minutes depending on how much follicles that you have you will then be taken back to the world to rest for about 30 minutes to an hour after which your doctor will now give you some medications to go home and you will be told how many eggs were retrieved from your ovaries after the procedure you might experience some mild to moderate lower abdominal cramps like menstrual cramps sort of feeling and but with simple paracetamol or tylenol you should be fine you might then experience some bloating like feeling like there's gas in your tummy like your tummy is so full for the next over the next two to five days you might also experience constipation that is finding it difficult to poop in five to ten days you should be back to your normal self completely but if in your case any of these symptoms like the abdominal cramps the bloatedness you know the constipation if it is heightened if it is exaggerated if it is severe then you want to call your doctor immediately because you could be having what we call ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is popularly called ohss this doesn't happen to everybody it depends on how well your ovaries responded to the stimulation for some people at the end of procedure we are getting 30 eggs 40 eggs most times those people have ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome so they come down with severe abdominal cramps severe and distended abdomen that's your belly becomes really big and then constipation sometimes vomiting and some other symptoms so when your symptoms are heightened that way you want to alert your doctor but most times when you have those mild to moderate abdominal cramps when you have you know mild bloatedness that is you are feeling like there's gas in your tummy it's uncomfortable but it's nothing severe those symptoms will usually go within five to ten days i hope you found this video informative if you want more videos like this subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell below and see you in my next video